All right, so unit five, lesson four, voca vocabulary review question. A mathematical blank is a mathematical sentence. A, a blank is a mathematical sentence with an equal sign. Who, who has that answer for me? Yes. An equation, very good. Now, something I want you to, to, to think about also is the book mentioned another, another word for equation. Does anybody remember what that word was? Uh, actually, there's more than one word. Go ahead. Open sentence. OK, do you guys remember that? So an open sentence, that was another term they used for an equation. All right, so we make sure you know that. Because I, if I remember from last year's quiz, I think that there is a question there about that. All right, so for this first problem, who wants to walk us through this first problem? Adila, go ahead. Right, so you're subtracting from the right-hand side of the equation, 3 and 14 hundredths, OK? But is that the only <laughs> side of the equation you're subtracting it from? No, you, you subtract it from both sides, right? So don't forget, and we're going to talk some more about that today. If we're subtracting from one side of my equation, I have to subtract from the other side of the equation. We're going to talk about why is that important today. We're going to get to why today. All right, so what did you get, Athila? Well, it was 9.7. OK, yes. No, was it nine or eight? Did we forget to regroup? OK, so some of you guys are forgetting to regroup. Go back, figure out where we made our mistake so that we don't make the mistake again. But you caught it, right? Are we good? All right, so then this, I'm going to try to get you guys to think about some terms here. When I'm adding opposites, there's a word for that, or there's a name for that. And the result is zero. Do you remember what, that, what we call that? Anybody? Yes? Right, these are additive inverses, and when you take the sum of additive inverses, it's zero. Okay, we, we talked a little bit yesterday about if you multiply inverses. Remember that? So a half, the inverse of a half is 2 over 1, and when we multiply inverses, what do we get back? One whole, right? When we add additive inverses, we get zero. Okay, so there's my answer. Who can walk me through this next problem right here? Ray, go ahead. Um, first, I did um, since it's a negative mm -hmm. four point um, eighty three hundred. Okay. I added zero point eighty three hundred okay. to both sides. Nice. So you identified which side of my equation was the variable, and then on that side of the equation we have negative four and eighty three hundredths. And so to get rid of negative four and eighty three hundredths, you took the opposite, which is add four and eighty three hundredths, and you did that to both sides. And then what'd you get? Nice. And then the added inverses become 0. And then t plus 0, that's the identity property for addition, is just going to give us back t. OK? Now, any questions about this so far? All right, who's got this last one? Last question. Somebody I haven't called on want to volunteer? Justin, can you go and walk me through it? Nice. You are going to subtract 14 and 2 tenths. And 14 and 2 tenths didn't have a sign in front of it, but we know the sign of that, right? What's the sign of that? It's a positive. We are going to undo plus 14 and 2 tenths, and we're going to subtract 14 2 tenths from both sides. OK, and when you did that, what did you get back? I got 24 and 649 tenths. Very good. 24 and 649 tens, hundreds, thousands. So 24, 649 thousands. OK, and then the additive inverse gives me 0. So 0 plus q, that's the identity property of addition, gives me back q. OK, any questions? All right, moving right along. OK, so um, I'm going to go and read this to you guys, what you'll learn. To solve equations by adding or subtracting, new vocabulary, adding additive Adding property of equality, subtracting property of equality, inverse operations. That's what we were talking about earlier. So now I want you guys to start using, not instead of saying opposite, we're going to say inverse operations. So why learn this? If you can solve equations, you can use known information to find the unknown information. You can think of an equation as a balance scale. When you do something to one side of an equation, you must do the same to the other side of the equation to keep it balanced. So we could think about a balance scale as Here's where my equal sign's at. Okay. And as long as I do the same thing to both sides, 
I'm OK. So if I remove 1 from this side, is it going to stay balanced? No. So in order for this to stay balanced, I have to remove 1 from the other side. Just like we do when we solve the equations, we have to isolate the variable by doing the same thing to both sides. You can't do it to one side and not the other side of the equal sign. Now, if you notice on the right, this is actually the solution right here. We have x equals what? equals 3, and each of these have a 1 on it, so x equals 3. So in order for, to, for us to go to x plus 2 equals 5, we had to remove 2 here <laughs> and then 2 here to get x equals 3 over here. OK? So that's just a really simple equation modeled here. Now let's go and get to some things that are a little more interesting. Does, have, does anybody have any questions about you know, why they're using this? Like balance scale as, you know, a way of thinking of equations and using inverse operations to solve them. We're good. Okay. All right. You can find the value of the unknown weight above by removing two weights from each side of the scale. The result is the scale on the right. This illustrates the subtraction property of equality. You can use this property and the addition property of equality to solve equations. So let's go to the key concept. So here we go. Um, the arithmetic. So here are the properties of equality. These are the first two you're going to learn. We're going to learn about two more on Monday. Addition property of equality. If you add the same value to each side of an equation, the two sides remain equal. So here, they gave you some more concrete examples. All right, when you have equations, they're not so concrete. Concrete. You have these expressions. One on. You might have a variable on both sides, depending on how complicated the equation is. But we can calculate 10, 20 divided by 2. We know that's 10. So we know we, we can verify that this is equal to 10. But typically when we're solving equations, we can't verify that one side's equal. We just have to trust that they're equal. But we know that if, if we can trust that that equal sign is, and that's a true, um, equ that equation has a solution, then we can add to both sides the same thing, and it's still going to stay true. Okay? Now, Algebraically, if you look over here, they're saying, hey, if A is equal to B, if A is equal to B, then as long as I add the same thing to both sides, they're still going to be equal. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. And then the same holds true for subtraction property. So if you subtract the same value from each side of an equation, the two sides remain equal. So here we have the same thing. So these two are equal, right? And then over here, what I'm doing to both sides is I'm subtracting 4 from both sides. And similarly for algebra, if you have a equals b, I can subtract from both sides c, whatever c is, and it's still an equal, it's, the, it's still a true statement. They're still equal to each other, OK? Any questions? It's just a recap of yesterday, a little more detail than yesterday. Now, let's go through some examples. To solve an equation, you want to get the variable alone on one side of the equation. Remember what I said? I used a word. I said isolate the variable. Okay? And isolate means to get by itself. So we're going to isolate the variable. That's a that's, that's more common way of saying um, this first, what's in this first sentence. You can use inverse operations, operations that undo each other to get the variable alone. Addition and subtraction are inverse operations. You can use addition to undo subtraction, and then vice versa. You can, un you can undo subtraction with addition. So can you guys go ahead and solve these two problems really quick? Really quick. Bakar, you got the first one? What did you get for the first one? Um, negative 80. Can you walk me through this? So here I got x minus 34 equals negative 46. And so what was the first step? Um, 
what am I going to add? You're right, you're, you're about to say it's subtract, so I need to add. But what am I going to add? So, right, so you're going to add 34 plus to the negative 46, but I have to do to both sides. So I think you might have made a mistake, so let's see if we can fix your mistake. So here's the step where we add to both sides, right? Now, let's fix, because it doesn't sound like your answer is right. Let's fix our answer. So it sounds like we're on the same page now. So what's it going to be? Uh huh. What's that going to be? Well, no, no. This is a negative 34 and a positive 34. And they're additive inverses. And we know additive inverses are going to be 0, right? OK, so but what about the right-hand side? What's that going to be? OK, remember what we said about different signs? What happens when we add different signs? Can you help him out, Paul? I mean, sorry, Zach. OK, and then what's the sign going to be? Right, and why did you say it's going to be negative? Right, so negative 46 has a larger magnitude, so my answer will be negative. And because they're different signs, I take the difference. And what was the difference? So do you understand, Bokar? All right, and then x plus 0, that's the identity property of addition. It gives me back x equals negative 12. How many of you guys got that? Some students are tripping up on the signs. OK, you have to be careful, because it, they don't go away. It just starts picking up from here. So the next problem. And let me walk you through the properties that we used here. So right here, this is the addition property of equality. That lets me add to both sides the same thing. And then once I do that, what I get back, additive inverses give me back the 0. And then to get rid of the 0, well, that's just the identity property of addition. That leaves me with x equals negative 12. OK? Now, you should always verify your answer. So Bokar, you gave me an answer earlier. And what you should do is you should say, hey, here's my answer for x. Put it back into the equation. So here, my answer is negative 12. I'm going to put it back into my equation. I'm going to check my answer, right? Remember yesterday we said, is this, is this true when I substitute that? That's basically what you're doing with your answer that you solve for. So here I have negative 12 minus 34. Well, they're the same sign, so we add them and we keep the sign. And it gives me back 46. 46 is equal to 46. That's true. That means my answer is correct, OK? That's, I did that quite a few times when I took quizzes when I was your age, because I, I, I would make minor miscalculations myself. And so I would substitute my answer back in just to make sure I didn't mess up on something silly. OK, last, last problem for this slide. Go ahead, who's got this one? Dominique, what do you got for me? Uh -huh. And what are we going to add to both sides? Okay, no, we're going to look at the one that's, we're going to add 104. So you're always going to look at what's with the variable. And your strategy is to get everything away from the variable, get the variable by itself. So 64 is on the other side of the equal sign. So it's already away from x. We don't have to worry about that. So we're just looking at the one, that's the, the, the numbers, the items that are next to x. And so we have negative 104 next to x. So we get rid of negative. You're right, we're going to add. So we're going to add 104 to both sides. Okay, does everybody understand that step? Any questions? OK. And Dominique, what's negative 104 plus 104? Well, oh, wait, hold on, hold on. What happens when we have additive inverses? Right, and then now let's add the other side. What do we get back over here? 168. So x plus 0 equals 168. So the first property we use was the additive property of equality. And then the additive inverses become 0. And then now the 0 is going to go away because of the identity property of addition. And then if we verify that, we'll see that that is the correct answer. OK? Jose? Yes, I messed up. Thank you. I don't know why. I thought I edited that out. Actually, I'll edit that out later, just so it's in the notes. This is 168. Thank you. OK, any questions? Good catch. Thank you, Jose. Next.
slide. All right, now this is where a lot of students lose points, BCR questions. And a lot of times because they misread the word phrase. And in lesson one, we took the word phrase and we came up with an algebraic expression. Well, now we're gonna build on top of that. Now we need to take what we have and make an equation out of it. Some of you guys can probably read this and figure it out, but see if you can come up with the correct equation that matches what your answer is. So solve it and see if you can have an equation that matches your solution. Ben, I'm going to have you answer this question whenever you're ready. And the next one, can you guys see the next question down here? I'm going to give that one to, let me see, Rayhan, I haven't heard from you today. Ben, do you have any guesses on your problem? Okay. Okay, Ben, go ahead. Oh, it costs $535. His skateboard costs $535? No, That's one expensive skateboard. It's more than his bike. He could buy, he could buy two bikes. <laughs> it's okay. Can, I'm going to call, Ben, do you want to call on somebody to help you out? Zach. Zach. He wants your help. Can you help explain this problem to him? So the equation would be x squared over the Nice. So this is what I have. I kind of I made a, I rewrote this into a word phrase. You have the cost of the mountain bike, right? And that is, and anytime you see the word is, that's like an equals. So the cost of the bike equals $245 more than the cost of the skateboard. So I just kind of reworded what you said, but what you said is correct. Okay, and then here's, here's my equation. Did your equation look like that? Did you, it might have been rearranged a little bit, but it should give you the same, it should give you the same result. Okay, and, and what did you get for your solution? Yes, yes, go ahead. Okay, and then, okay, yeah, we gotta do both sides, right? Okay, so when you subtract it from both sides, you get $45. This side becomes zero, S plus zero, additive inverses. That's my answer for S. And then make sure our final answer has the units labeled. The skateboard costs $45. Do you have a question, Justin? Uh, I did, uh, <coughs> yes, you, you did what? And that's, that's the same thing. All you're doing, um, Justin, is you're taking this and you're moving it over here to be equal to that. So it's the same equation, just flipping the, it around, okay? So you make a good point because sometimes I see students struggle because they, the, the variable's on one side of the equation. And so if I have three equals x, let's, that's just an example. Let me use a different variable instead of uh, that. Uh, an example would be, uh, say I had 
I'll use, uh, I'll use I, I don't see x here. I'll use x. So if I have 3 equals x, I can always flip it. And everything on the right side, I move to the other side, and vice versa. That's the same equation. OK, so what you had is the same thing. You just, you just moved it over. OK? All right, so Rehan, what do you got for me? Uh huh. Okay, I think I I think I got something similar. Or you could have done twenty six point nine five equals. Good afternoon, eighth grade and high school students. Please listen carefully. We are going to be dismissing by cohort to the assembly this afternoon, to the pep rally this afternoon, I should say. We are ready for the following cohorts to walk quietly to the gymnasium at this time. We are ready for cohort 8-1, 9-1, and 10-1. Cohort 8-1, 9-1, and 10-1 should be walking to the gymnasium at this time. Again, cohorts 8-1, 9-1, and 10-1 should be walking to the gymnasium at this time. Teacher, please make sure you're walking them in a line to the gymnasium at this time. Again, please make sure you're walking them in a line to the gymnasium at this time. Thank you. Continue, Rehan. We are only ready for 8-1, 9-1, and 10-1. 8-1, 9-1, and 10-1. Now continue, Rehan. So what I did was I subtracted 19 from both sides. Right, so it sounds like we have the same equation. You just use a different variable. That's fine. OK, so you subtracted 19 from both sides. Very good. And that, do you know what that property is? No, this is the subtraction property of equality. That's when we do the same thing to both sides. OK, now, go ahead. Students and teachers, we will be in different classes by the time that this pep rally dismisses. Students should bring their backpacks and coats with them. Again, students should bring their possessions with them. We are only ready for 8-1, 9-1, and 10-1. Thank you. This is painful today. Go ahead, Rehan. Finish it up. OK, and what about this other part right here, positive 19, minus 19? And why is it 0? Because they're add additive inverses. They're additive inverses, yes. And then what happens to my 0? That it, go, it goes away. And why does it go away? Because of identity, identity property of subtraction. Uh, of addition, yeah. right, addition, right. OK, and then so our cost is $7.95. Are we good? Yeah. OK, moving along. Jasmine Rector, can you please report to the main office? Jasmine Rector, can you please report to the main office? Thank you. Try to make a problem from this equation. Make your own problem. The earlier classes wanted to take uh, a female in the class and talk about how she was spending money for her outfit or something. Mm -hmm. So make up some story. Make up your own. I'd be curious to see what you have. Please pardon the interruption. Isela Aguilar Flores, could you please come to the main office with your stuff? Again, Isela Aguilar Flores, if you could please come to the main office with your stuff. Thank you. Uh, wait till the crowd clears out. We, it's really busy right now in the hallways. Once they've, dis once they've called all the, all the high school in the eighth grade out. Then, then we could let people in the hallways. OK, so who can walk me through? What do you have? Go ahead, Justin. OK, that's a good story. But let me, let me tweak a little bit. You said he lost $286. Good afternoon, teachers, students, and staff. We are ready for the following cohorts. Please make sure you are walking your cohort down to the gymnasium at this time. We are ready for 8-2, 9-2, and 10-2. Again, cohorts 8-2, 9-2, and 10-2. Cohorts 8-2, 9-2, and 10-2. You may walk with your classes to the gymnasium at this time. There's got to be a way for me to turn that speaker off so we can have class. OK, so Justin, um, what you said was correct. You said, hey, Bob lost $286, but then he got $74. Here's what you say. Bob lost $286, and he was left with $74.
how much did he have before he lost $286? Do you understand how we just tweaked it just a little bit? Does anybody else have another one? Jose, I haven't heard from you today. Go ahead. Okay, he wasted how much money? <laughs> what did he waste it on? Video games? Because now I'm curious about your story. Your story, it's, good, it's valid. That's a good story. Um, let me go ahead and go through with the books example because I, I used the book example to use for the next problem. So here's the equation. You guys got it correct. That's the word phrase I used for it. Yeah, send them on in. And then, shh, quietly, please. Here's what the book came up with. Quietly, hello, I need to get through this for the lesson. So Rita deleted from her, it could be her phone, and this, back when this book was made, her audio player, MP3 player, but most people use their phones for their music. So she deleted 286 songs from her audio player. She had 74 songs left. How many songs did Rita have on her audio player before she deleted the 286 songs? Okay, so we found that solution. And that's what we got, right? That was the answer. Make sure you label your answers. Now, here this problem is a little bit differently, uh, differently written out, so that means there's a different, different story. Come up with a story for me. Somebody read it to yourself and somebody give me a story. I'll read it to you. Describe a problem situation that matches the equation n plus 41 equals 157. Good afternoon, teachers, students, and staff. We are ready for the following cohorts to walk down. We are ready for 8-3, 9-3, and 10-3. 8-3, 9-3, and 10-3. Cohorts 8-3, 9-3, and 10-3 should be walking to the gymnasium at this time. Thank you. Who's got a story for me? Zach, give me your story. Clarissa went to the mall and her parents gave her money. How much did her parents give her? Use the equation. Okay. Oh, okay. Nice, I like that. So Clarissa was going to the mall. Her parents gave her some money. And then when she got to the mall, her really nice friend gave her some more money. They gave her $41. I like, I like Clarissa's friend. And then it, all together, she had $157. How much money did Clarissa's parents give to her? Nice, that's a good one. That'll work. You got another story? Go ahead. Nice. I like that story. So uh, what was the name of your character? Jordan. Jordan rescued, Jordan and her, Jordan and her friend rescued 157 mm -hmm. animals, and Jordan res rescued 41 animals. How many did her friend rescue? I like yeah, that. Perfect. Teachers, Let's walk through this. Students and staff, we are ready for our next group of cohorts. We're ready for 8, 4, 9, 4, and 10, 4. 8494 and 104. You can make your way to the gymnasium at this time. 8494 and 104. You can make your way to the gymnasium at this time. Thank you. So I used the story about Rita, and I just re recycled Rita's story with the MP3 player, but I worded it differently this time. I said Rita added 41 songs to her audio player. She had 157 songs total. How many songs did Rita have on her audio player before she added 41 songs? Well, that's the same. That's the, that's the same equation here. Here's the answer. We're done. Last part before we go. Vocabulary. Blank operations are operations that undo each other. Who's got that one? Amari. Inverse operations. Good. Error analysis. Dylan and Gene tried to solve the equation x plus 9 equals negative 9. x plus 4 equals negative 9. Who solved the equation correctly and explained? So take a look at these two post-its. This is Dylan's work. This is Gene's work. Who was right? Who was wrong? Why was somebody wrong? Goldus, I haven't heard from you today. Go ahead. Dylan's wrong. Why is Dylan wrong? Because um, for the um, for the second step, 
Uh huh. Right. So in the second step, he added and he should have subtracted. And Jean, did she do it correctly? Yeah. Right. What operation, what properties did she use here? Good Subtraction property of equality. We're ready for our final cohort of the afternoon, cohort 85, to make their way down to the gymnasium at this time. Read the time. answer. Cohort 85 can make their way to the gymnasium at this time. Thank you. Now, fill in the missing numbers to solve each equation. So here's my equation. And remember, remember we have to use the property of equality. What goes in this first blank right here? 12. What goes over here then? 12. 12. Why would... If you're using, what property is this now? Um, subtraction property of equality. So we're, we're doing the opposite of adding 12 to both sides. We're going to subtract 12 from both sides. Over here on the second equation, what am I going to put in these blank places over here? We're going to add 8 and add 8. And what is that property? Addition property of equality. Very good. Okay. Make sure you do your quick check tonight. Over the weekend, I'm going to be making lesson three a zero if you haven't done it. I already made lesson two a zero for those that didn't do it. And it wasn't many, but there's still a handful of you not keeping up with that. Yep. Are we doing the questions If you want. Um, hold on, I'll tell you how, what time is it. It's 106, so you have, what do you guys out of here, 20 after? You have plenty of time to do the quick check. We're doing lesson four, but you can't do lesson four if you have no lesson three.